Hi everyone, this is Arcadius and welcome back to Naval Creed. Today we'll be going over the most recent prism ship, and that is the American Heavy Cruiser Albany. Uh, now as previously mentioned, this is a ship that shares quite a few similarities with the most recent Tech Tree Heavy Cruiser, that is Oregon City, and that is because they are pretty much just a copy-paste. The only real difference is, is that Oregon City is at a 8.5 matchmaking, Albany is at a 9.0. Other than that, she's pretty much exactly the same. Um, she does have the twin 3-inch anti-aircraft cannons versus the 40 millimeter, and she does get a little bit faster rate of fire. But besides that, there's really nothing different. She has the same consumables, same kind of layout, same kind of play style. Not much that really sets her apart from the tech tree ship. That doesn't mean she's bad, though. I mean, she might not be anything special, but she's still a really, really fun ship. Um, and she is pretty much just like a Des Moines, I would say, in that regards. I do have her for gun reload and rotation to get her gun rate of fire to 7.8 rounds a minute, which is really, really good, but still not in anything close to um, Des Moines, which I have at least this one up to 11.11 .11 rounds a minute. So you're still not going to have that blistering rate of fire, but it is still pretty good at tier 9, and you can pack quite a punch. So without further ado, let's go over her stats. Right, so we have 46,100 health, 16% torpedo damage resistance. Armor-wise, we still have 6 inches of belt armor, 8 inches on the turret faces, it looks like. Um, armor-wise, you're nothing special. Same kind of rule of thumb with American Heavy Cruisers. If you give broadside, you will be citadeled, so try your best not to do that. Uh, anything else here? Not really. A gun's base reload of 6.67 rounds a minute. You have 30 second, 180 degree turn time, so pretty fast as well. Your guns are really good. Uh, HE initial velocity is faster than AP initial velocity, but honestly, I've had no problems with either shells. Main gun range of 16.8 kilometers, secondary range of 5 kilometers, nothing too substantial. And then maximum speed is 33 knots. And then just like Oregon City, you have a crane. But you don't have a catapult, nor do you have a catapult fighter. So you're actually, your ability to detect like torpedoes or aircraft, well, aircraft are easy, but like destroyers and stuff like that is actually quite limited. And you actually are not able to look over islands at all. Uh, so sometimes if you know like there's an enemy battleship on the enemy island or across from the island, you send up your fighter just to see exactly where it is, because that'll plan if you move now or if you have to wait for it to be in a better position. Um, you don't have that capability at all with Oregon City or Albany. And it may seem like a pretty small thing, but it does play a pretty substantial part in games. There's many games where I play both of these ships where I go to launch my fighter so I can have a little bit extra spotting, and I just don't have that capability at all. Uh, it's not a game changer, I would say, but it's still something that's noticeable. Um, but yeah, so pretty much copy-paste. I had expected her to have some kind of gimmick, like radar or something. Um, that obviously is not here. You can have anti-air barrage, uh, repair, and a damage control party, and that's it. There's no special consumable. But she is the first... Well, I'd, well, she is the first Prism American Heavy Cruiser that's not a super cruiser like Alaska or Guam. So she's kind of special in that regards. Um, but yeah, she's not a bad ship. So let's toss her into game and see what we can do. All right, here's all the game. We have three battleships, quite a few cruisers, and then a few destroyers as well. No carrier, which is fine. Um, but... In terms of anti-air defense, she is relatively pretty decent. Uh, one of the top ships, I would think, in terms of AA defense. I haven't really compared her numbers, but in gameplay, she does take down aircraft quite quickly. Alright, so let's see where we want to go. Another thing is that it kind of looks like her model has a wooden deck instead of the steel deck that American cruisers had in the war. Um, obviously, this just might be part of the 
visual looks of the ship, but it's still pretty nice. You can get a nice little wooden glow off the deck here. And just a small thing, but I enjoy it. It's not going to affect gameplay in any, but it's a nice visual uh, imprint. Alright, so let's see what ships we have. We have a Frente de Gros, and a Line, and a Bismarck. Those are pretty powerful battleships. Uh, two Roosters, a Minotaur, an Albany, and a Fargo, a Jutland, a Tashkent, another Jutland, and an Akazuki. So pretty gun heavy on the destroyers and the cruisers. Actually, everything is gun heavy. That's fine. Alright, so we have the Tashkent. That's the first one we see. Pretty, s well, Tashkent's pretty fast, so I, I wouldn't say her shells are slow. But you do need to give quite a bit of lead for her. But we did do over 6,000 damage in that first salvo. And there's another 8 shell hits, and she's already almost sunk. And so let's start sending some shells towards these cruisers over here. You can see how it kind of feels like a Des Moines. But it's, it's not there yet. It's pretty close, but not quite. Just slowly working down these cruisers. I don't have a good broadside for armor piercing. Well, now I do. So we're going to switch over there. I'm going to leave my secondaries well, to work over the Tashkan, but she was already taken out. Alright, so now that we have some broadside, let's punch them with some armor piercing. Yep. And start ranking up the citadels. There goes one. Hmm. I think this rooster is going to turn all the way around. I don't know, let's just send some shells towards Yetland. Alright, so we're going to be coming up on this rooster here. So let's switch back to armor piercing and finish her off quickly. And there we go, cool. Next. Let's work on these destroyers. Uh, Akazuki is quite a big threat with her very powerful torpedoes. Mm, somewhere like there? There we go. We did take actually quite a big chunk. I think we're going to be starting to take the attention of these battleships. So we're going to pull away a little bit. But I'm after sending some shells for this Yutland here. Alright, and I could use high explosive or armor piercing on these battleships. And I think I'm going to start off with high explosive so I can get some fire damage. But this Yutland is being quite a pain to sink. That should have it. There we go. Alright, so we got the Bismarck first. Let's see if we can light a fire on her real quick. But we do have a very good broadsides for armor piercing, so I might just switch immediately to armor piercing. Yep, got one on her. Let's send one salvo of high explosive at Lion and see what we can do with that. Mm -hmm. Awesome, got a fire in her as well. So let's work on Lion with our armor piercing. As you can see, I'm in a kiting position. So in case they do switch their focus to me, I immediately can turn and run. You always have to have an escape route planned for you. Bismarck looks like she's going to go down really, really quickly, surprisingly. Let's actually get some damage on her ourselves before there's nothing left. And there we go. I am going to pop a heal, not because I really need to, but because there's only two ships left, so it would be a waste not to use it. At this angle, Lion is angled just enough that my armor piercing will do ricocheting. So I'm going to switch over to high explosive here. I'm also going to turn around. 
I'm going to start rushing the enemy and give a nose on profile because she's already being worked over pretty well by everyone else. I keep destroying secondary armaments. I've already destroyed half of her entire secondary suite. So that works out for any ships close enough to her, like destroyers. And you just slowly work over and accumulate damage over time. If you have broadsides, use armor piercing. If not, then use high explosive. It's pretty simple as that. The ship is a really good cruiser killer. It can destroy destroyers really easily. Um, for cruisers, well yeah, I just mentioned she's a cruiser killer for battleships. Uh, you can light them on fire, and if they get broadside, you have a pretty decent rate of fire, so you can inflict a lot of armor-piercing damage as well. And then carriers, you have really good AA and a defensive AA to knock down aircraft out of the sky. And then either shell type is best to use on those, whether it's angled or not. And all we have left is this one last thread de cross. So let's send some high explosive downrange. I probably could still do damage with armor piercing, but I'm looking for fires right now. And I do have health boss and speed buff supplied, so this is not the base ship. I do have some skills in other buffs applied to her right now. There we go, we got a fire. We actually damaged one of her main guns too, with a high explosive shell. Uh, not the craziest thing I've seen today. Um, I was playing Kaga earlier and was in a secondary duel with a Colorado and was managing to Citadel it, so it's been a very interesting game play today. We are actually capping the base as well, not that we need to, but hey, why not? I think the battleship will be sunk before we even cap though. And you just keep destroying secondary guns. Keep setting fires, and keep sinking ships. Alright, so let's see how we did. Wasn't the best game, I would say, but we still did pretty decently. Alright, 223,000 damage. We sank his ships, six ships sunk, 228 shell hits, 10 citadels, 8 fires, 22 secondary hits. Uh, for 11,900 base XP, and with all my free XP buffs, I gained over 18,000 free XP because she is a prism ship. You can grind free XP with her. Shells, high explosive, 8 inch, we were able to get 98,000 damage. AP was 83,000 damage. Fires was 32,000. Secondary battery actually did almost 10,000 damage as well. And for only 22 secondary hits, that's pretty decently. Now, my final verdict on the ship as of Right now, if there are no changes made to her, I would say not buy her. If you're looking for something exactly like this, you might as well just play Oregon City. Now, if you're looking for a kind of Des Moines gameplay that gives you that free XP bonus, then sure, go for her. Uh, if you already played Oregon City, you know exactly what you're getting yourself into, and you can gr help grind some free XP for you, no problem. Uh, now, there is the... Free XP grinding Des Moines on Newport News or the Space Des Moines. Uh, she does come out occasionally for Star Coins, but it is quite costly to get her that way. And so this might be a more viable option. I'm certain that there's people going that are going to buy this ship because of, well, American Cruiser, Rapid Fire and Guns, good AA. Nothing at all wrong with this ship. It's just there's nothing that's different than the one that's already in the tech tree. Uh, so if you feel that you want to play the ship, she's definitely a fun ship. I use her quite often, um, mainly because she's just a new ship right now. But definitely not a bad ship by any way. Just nothing special. Um, with that, I will wrap up today's video. If you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And join me tomorrow while we go over the Tier 4 matchmaking battleships in our next stats clash. So again, thank you and take care.